Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today let's have a look at the just released Embraer 190 and Embraer 195 from Flight Sim Studios. I'm sure many of you are going to remember their earlier Embraer 170 and 175 and they have now expanded the package to the 190 and 195 which you can currently at the time of this recording on the 15th of December. 2023 purchase for a price of 39 euros and 95 cents so we are going to have a look at what the package offers and what the airplane can do and i can tell you that much in advance already we have come quite away with that airplane so ever since the first release which was a little bit of a disappointment i can tell you that the airplane has taken some huge steps forward there's been lots of features added however there's still a little bit of a way to go as well but more on that later in the flight. For now, suffice to say that I've just loaded the airplane up at Munich Airport and we're going to run one of Air Dolomiti's daily services for the Lufthansa Group over to Venice. So that's what Air Dolomiti mostly does. They connect the two Lufthansa hubs of Munich and Frankfurt with Northern Italy. All right, and that is what we are going to do today as well. Got a lovely morning on the apron at Munich down here and actually parking in the gate where I've never been to before in this airport. That, But it's the real one, it's uh, the same one where the flight stood yesterday. So before we start, let's have a quick look with a walk around to see how the model of the Embraer 190 and 195 looks like. A couple of details here like the um, remove before flight dongles that we can see hanging around. Also, a quick look at the nose landing gear down here, where we can certainly see that a lot of work has gone into these. Now, the models of the Embraer are actually from uh, X-Craft, so they have been purchased by Flatsim Studios for use from the uh, X-Plane Embraers. And I do have to say, this actually looks pretty good for, uh, let's say, for a model that was imported in a Microsoft Flight Simulator. But overall, the externals of the airplane do look pretty good. Like, if we go really close, we can see them become a little bit unsharp, but if we keep at recent dis at uh, re oh, I, my English, if we keep it at a good distance, then uh, we can see that the model is actually right up to standard, and let's be honest, how many times are you going to be that close to the model anyway? That's really only for conducting the walkarounds. And if we're honest, even for a walk around, this does look pretty good. Right then, let's go to the side. I didn't turn on the electrics yet, so the lights are still off. Just um, to confirm that. It's not a bug, it's um, just that I wanted to show you the outside model first. Quite a good level of detail over here on the main landing gear as well. They do have quite some of the structures modeled. And we can even see the brake wear pins down here. So these must not be flush with the metal down here, otherwise the brakes are too warm and you could no longer fly. Right, quick look into the main gear bay. And that is what it looks like down here. Oh, a little hole there in the uh, cabin, but hopefully they can fix that for a future update. Right then, let's have a quick look into the aft cargo hold. That's what it looks like in here. Not too spacey, but it's an Embraer after all, so... It shall be sufficient for what they can transport up here. The plane can take 122 passengers, correct me if I'm wrong on that, at least according to Simbrick it can. And this one, just to confirm it, is the 195 model of the aircraft. Nice little level of detail here with the stabilizer paint markings. You can see it's currently trimmed at uh, zero degrees. Okay then, so the left side probably looks the very same as the right side, but for the sake of completeness we are just going to complete the walk around over here. Again, watch the trucks down there, also optional equipment, just like the pedo covers. The only thing that just went away is the ground power unit, which disappeared when I requested GSX services. In terms of GSX services, it is nice to say that the airplane um, by default is getting docked correctly, so it looks like there is some sort of uh, configuration for the Embraer included with GSX already, or the other way around, the Embraer included the um, GSX configuration more likely. 
All right, so overall, a very good looking outside model. And now let's head inside and have a look at what the cabin has to offer. So that's our Embraer cockpit. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. We are going to start by actually looking back here into the cabin. So this is the entrance area. The emergency exit lights are illuminating currently, though I'm not 100% sure why. The switch is off if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, emergency exit lights are off, but we'll just ignore that for now. Um, in any case, it is nice to see though that the emergency exit lights are actually simulated. So you can choose between three different versions of a cabin. Right now we got the version including a business class over here. It is worth pointing out these um, Air Dolomiti seat covers over here, which they have modeled for all kind of airlines. So yesterday when I tried the plane for the uh, very first flight to check if it's functional, I flew an Austrian livery and it had the red covers with the Austrian logo on it. So that was quite cool. Overall, the cabin, I tend to say, is looking quite all right. There is a little problem moving around though, so lots of invisible walls when you try to walk the aisle. Like right now, can't move up front over here. I have to move over the seats, but um, well, in order to just have a look at what the cabin looks like, I do think we can do that. So the um, call for the cabin attendant button, by the way, does not work. Okay, so um, let's just walk over the um, seats then in order to get to the back to the economy cabin. That's what the economy seats look like. Again, good level of detail. I do like it that they included the airline logos with the um, different with the different liveries and last but not least you can exchange the cabin in three different versions so we got the um, business class cabin featured right now and we can also feature the um, standard all economy cabin and we can feature a high density cabin both of which i'm going to show you a little bit later and when you're looking here at the um Seat covers themselves, safety cards, and the onboard magazine are actually adjusted per livery as well. That's quite cool. So, in terms of the cabin, Flight Sim Studios did a pretty good job, I tend to say. Right. Interesting. For the way back, we can walk the aisle. For the way over... Ah, now it works. Ah, until here. Okay. Still pressing the button for the record. But, well, that shall be fine. So, a couple of invisible walls there, but that's okay. In other words, that's um, what the galley itself looks like. I tend to say level of detail is certainly all right, and it shows us everything that we do want to see over here. So, in terms of the cabin, they actually did a good job modeling the Embraers. The buttons are not clickable, but hey, I do believe that's only the Just Flight Fokker at the moment that actually does that. Can we do something here? No. Okay. Can we open the toilet door, though? No, but we can extend the jump seat. Okay. So, let's have a look around the cockpit of the Embraer 195 then. So, first of all, for the record of it, before we turn anything on, we are running build 0.9.21 over here. That's the first release build of the Embraer. So, that's the version we're flying. Now, let's get rid of that, because obviously you won't have that in a real plane. So, um, apart from that, the cockpit looks pretty much like what the cockpit of the 170 and 175 look like. With a difference, though, we've got optional heads-up displays down here in the Embraer. And those can be configured from the iPad down here. So, if we go down here into the settings, and then we go on to Operator, over here you can configure the different cabin classes and the heads-up display. So right now I've got them installed for both the pilot and the co-pilot, but we could, for example, install it only for the pilot, and then it gets removed for the FO, and or we could do just the FO, even though I wonder why any airline would install that, but it is technically possible, or we could just remove the HUD altogether. Likewise, we also have an option to remove the cabin if we want to, but today let's take HUDs on both sides, and over here we can change the cabin layout as well. For example, we can go into the single class cabin. And if we now look back, that is what it looks like. So you've got the option to change between all kinds of cabin. One last over here, which is the high density cabin. Let's have a look at that. That's probably the I want to break your uh, knees cabin. Yeah, look at that. Seat. <laughs> oh boy. How is anyone supposed to sit in that? 
My condolences to everyone who has to. But okay, that's the different options we got available for the cabin in the Embraer. So, quite cool that we got all that stuff. I'm gonna go back to the dual class cabin so that we've got a business class in the front. And then we got a standard economy class in the back. Apart from that, what else can we do over here? Well, how about we start with a couple of the other options. So obviously you can put your Simbrief username in. You can decide if you want to fly from the right seat. That is then going to default the camera to the right seat. Can adjust things like the display refresh rate. You can use or you can reset brake temperatures. Enable MCDU keyboard entry. That's quite cool. So you can actually make an entry through your physical keyboard. And well. I do trust you can read, so you will obviously be able to um, read all of that. Okay, operator options then, we just talked about. We can disable the auto brake option, so that's down here. And we can get that gun as well, like that. But I like my auto brake, I'm gonna keep it. Okay, and we have things like passenger announcements which you however only hear with the door open or when you actually move to the back that's quite cool and then finally going into the calibration tab that's where we can calibrate our hardware profiles so where we can um, calibrate the thrust levers reminds me a little bit of the aerosoft crj but since flight sim studios has close relations to aerosoft there are rumors that the flight sim studios um, project managers have now taken over the a330 so, since they do have quite clo close relations, I'm not surprised that these things look similar. Okay, so, then, from there on, if we move down into the electronic flight pack again, you can see two tabs are grayed out down there, that's the departure and the manifest. But, look at that, if you go into flight details, we can actually download the uh, latest SimReef flight plan that we've created under the um, SimReef username above, and here it is. And if we now load that up in the flight schedule, then we can actually access the departure <coughs> tab down here as well. <laughs> so, over here, some nice information for filling out our MCDU. I have not found a way to view the actual OFP yet, though. But if, if I'm missing anything, then do let me know in the comments below. Certainly looking forward to that. And apart from that, let's move on to the departures tab. That's where we can find some more of our information and pretty cool. That's where we can also load up the fuel and the payload over here. This is by default tech from Simbrief, but let's say we want a little bit more fuel. So I want, let's say, 4,500 kilograms of fuel for this one. Then down here we can decide whether we want to load it instant or in real time. And over here we can also do a little bit of takeoff calculation. So let's say I want from a... 2, 6, left, dry conditions with the flaps at 2 as runway number 1 and as runway number 2 I want the parallel, so 2, 6, right, it's also dry and we can update the weather data from here and if we now go and calculate, it's going to create the manifest for us down here where we've got our take of data and our performance data and look at that, you can even send that stuff to the MCDU so that stuff is then created live I still wonder why they call it a manifest though, but Hey, why not? All right, so we'll just go for an instant load right now so that our airplane is loaded up. And then I tend to say we call for our GSX boarding. And do we want to board the crew? Nah, the crew is here already. Yeah, thank you. Okay, cool. So with the passengers on the way, I tend to say that it is time to actually start the airplane up. Let's put on the batteries, GPU, a little word on the GPU there, when I selected the GPU in first place, it showed up fine over here, but when I enabled GSX services, it just vanished, so in case you're wondering why there is no visible GPU down there, that's the reason. Okay, so emergency lights on, fast melts, no smoking going on, and with that we are prepared for the boarding. But it is quite cold, so let's get on the APU as well down there. Okay, APU on and start. Okay, so this place by default are rather bright, and I do find that they only really change the brightness at the very lowest setting, like, small example here, when I turn the PFD up, 
that's obviously much too bright, but somewhere very close to the lowest setting if you go completely off and then one up or so, then I really like that brightness level. Let's do the same on the other side as well. Something like that. That one here Hello. controls the clock, so that will just leave wherever it is, really. Okay, so that is our display brightness setup. We can do the same for the heads-up displays over here. But by default they are rather bright as well, so I'm completely down one up. And that's looking good. The hut reminds me a little bit of the hut on the CRJs. Maybe a coincidence, but I don't know. For sure they did somewhat adjust it for the Embraer, so that's out of question. Okay then, let's move down to our MCDU. And down here we can start on the root page. So, it's the 15th of December, the IRAC data is current, let's go forward to the route, and over here we've got a Simreef import now. So we're departing Munich, we're going to Lima, India, Papa, Sulu. And our flight ID is, don't let me lie to you, I believe it's Echo November, yeah, Echo November 8202. EN8202. Okay then, with that, let's uh, request our flight plan. Flight plan received. So give it a little while to actually load everything up. So, data link flight plan, Munich to um, Venice, apply. I wonder if the real one got that um, I'm working symbol as well. Okay, and that is our flight plan now entered. So, if we have looked through the route now, it doesn't seem to recognize airways, but all the waypoints are there. So, departure, runway, it's gonna be a 26 left departure on the Turbo 7 Sierra. Apply. And then for the arrival, it's going to be runway 4 right with an ILS Zulu approach out of Laren. And our arrival, let's quickly check our Simbrief chart to see what we got up there. Lima India Papa Zulu. Okay, so let's see that. I believe it's Albert to Echo. We can just use one of these straight in arrivals. I'll probably go for the latter. So we'll do Albert to Papa then, leading us towards Laren. So Albert to Papa for the Laren transition onto the ILS Romney 04, right? Looks good. Apply. Okay, let's have a quick look over our flight plan then. It still doesn't have any constraints, so it's still the um, default MSFS root management system. They haven't updated that to a custom system yet, so you are confined to the limits of that, which we have covered well in past videos. Like for example, altitude dependent waypoints over here are still defined as user. That's first version of MSFS. By now, all the remains of that have actually been replaced in the actual um, working title updates for the Garmin units and so on. But hey, it's better than nothing, is it? Okay, so from here let's follow the menus towards the um, performance in it. And we are running 4,500 kilos of fuel. And our trip fuel is going to be... We have that anywhere? Okay, I could have sworn that was anywhere here, so nonetheless, maybe here. Take off fuel 4300, but they don't seem to say how much fuel we are going to use up. Okay, well that's fine for me. Um, that is fine for me, we'll just say that we're going to use some 2000 kilos then. Okay then, next page, so, now, cruise winds is, um, that's the ground, over there, where's the cruise stuff? Not here it seems, okay. Got that anywhere here? No, would be really helpful if we could just show our, um, operational flight plan over here. Because that would obviously contain all that stuff. 
Okay, so like that I just gotta take the data out of my iPad, so my real-world iPad. So it's 005 at 27 for this one, cruising at flight level 290. What we can get though is the zero fuel weight. And um, that one, we can just go to the ground menu. And over here it is 38650. So 38650. Okay, fuel looks good. Cross weight 43130. Yep, is okay as well. In the meantime, by the way, let's get rid of the engine covers, cones, and safety pins. Okay then, let's move on to the next one, but looks like we can't do anything here yet. There we go, performance, takeoff. Okay, so latest data for Munich gives me... We have that anywhere, maybe? Yeah, here it is, so... Let's update 290 at 4, 3 degrees, 1032. 290 at 4. It is a dry runway, and we're just going to leave the pressure out and the barometric setting over here, that's fine. Then we can go next page. So, flaps. Now, let's make it a flap 2 takeoff, because why not? And then we can go to the takeoff page, and that's our takeoff data, which is now showing on the PFD as well. It does not seem to appear on the HUD yet, though. So, on the HUD, if we look at that, you can see there's still nothing marked on the uh, speed indicator there, unfortunately. But maybe that's going to come with a future version. I surely hope so. Okay, so... That stuff is in, then we can continue onto the climb page, transition altitude 5,000 feet. And cruise, well, you can see there's basically uh, nothing in there yet. Descent page, transition level, um, I'm just going to put 6,000 in there, we'll have to adjust that in flight. And the landing stuff we have to do in flight as well. Okay, so, with that I tend to say that we are mostly done. Just looking through all of those menus would be nice if those weather requests would eventually become active but not yet it seems okay flight plan summary well we'll play a little bit more with that stuff en route okay 172 miles and that is looking all right down there so just the radio to go and i'm just going to set unicom over here and guard frequency over here. By the way, nice to emphasize that this um, that these shortcuts actually work. Okay, then I'm gonna go for 115.0 in NAV2 and what's the Ottersberg VOR? Let's get our Munich charts out. I'm gonna look at uh, Venice later again. So for now we just need Munich. Okay, I need a taxi chart down there. I actually just using parking stamps is going to be fine. And then we need a new tab. This could be a little bit more intuitive to use. I mean, they could show you the title of the chart up here. And then they could show you, like, the um, basic data of where you are. So you, you know, don't have to, shouldn't have to reselect the um, airport every time. Stuff like that. But, okay. For future versions, hopefully. So, let's say... Turbo 6 Whiskey, and I want that those things in night mode, really. Here we go. So, that thing takes us straight at 1.5 Delta Mike Sierra, or 1900, whichever is later. <coughs> Left turn to Ottersberg, 12.3. That's gonna go active over here, and then we'll just put the others on standby. <clears throat> okay, squawk, something IFR, like so, and we don't need anything on the ADFs, or do we? Well, I suppose we can tune Mike Sierra Echo 358. Like that. Alright, COM3, we will not be using that. Okay, so, on the transponder menu itself, you can only select Tara at the moment, but, hey, 
You got the choice between Stampa and Tara in here, the other modes, hopefully for a future update. Okay then, so with that checked out, let's go ahead and set up our flight control unit. So we're gonna go for 7000 on the altitude. Press the toga button down here. Caution, that plane can be a little confusing. So, toga is down here, auto throttle disconnect up here. Greetings for you Boeing pilots out there. Okay, 7000 is in, LNF is armed. Then let's also get ourselves the VOR displays up here. <coughs> VOR1, VOR2. Then a quick check through the systems and what we got. So, flight number. That one we can still change. I hope at least. Let's see. Um, because the flight ID, here we have to enter our Sybil flight number. But for the flight itself, we then enter the ATC call sign. So, or at least in the real world, that's what you would do. So, DLA 8 Foxtrot November. Alright, and that's here as well now. Okay, very good. So, the rest of all that stuff is looking good. Then we can just run a quick check through all the different menus, making sure everything is good. It's a little cold there. I wonder why the target is 13 degrees. Can we adjust that somehow? Uh, to be totally fair, I'm not 100% sure of... Did I turn the APU bleed off now or did I turn it on? I believe I turned it off, huh? It did get more quiet. Listen to that. Ah, okay, the passenger cabin seems to be set to the attendant setting, and I don't know, perhaps they haven't modeled that, or perhaps they only model it in flight, so let's leave it there, and we'll come back to that in flight, okay? See what the cabin attendant is going to do. Okay, obviously no anti-ice on at the moment. Engine maintenance, we didn't exceed anything yet. Okay, and finally system configuration. Well, engineering stuff. Nothing we got anything to do with. Okay, so that's basically that. Cool, so with all that done, I would say, let's just configure the map as well. So we want a vertical profile, we want our TCAS. The terrain is still the default stuff, and no idea why that is showing red, it's certainly not supposed to. Weather radar, you can enable that Asobo weather overlay in flight. Well, talk about the usefulness as a radar, but I do have a separate video on that. Okay, so that is the um, ND configured. We can quickly do the same on the other side. Vertical profile, TCAS, thank you. Now you may go back to systems or whatever you want, FO. Okay, what do we have over here? Your damper off, bleed APU valve open, steering off, yeah, that's all okay. Alright, cool, then let's go ahead and prepare for pushback and departure. What happened to my chart? Oh, interesting, it's gone. Okay, so... What's this? Can't do anything here. Come on. Alright, this is where we're parking. Push back onto Delta 3. Orange or blue, doesn't really matter. Straight out, Echo 2, Sierra 8, and then down here via Bravo 12, we'll go straight to the runway for an intersection takeoff. And with that, I tend to say our briefing is complete. Alright, cool. So all that good stuff is done, so GSX, what are you doing? Waiting for boarding to complete. Now what's it waiting for? Ah, it couldn't open the aft cargo. Okay. Well in that case, grab menu, aft cargo, here you go.
Interesting. It would obviously be nice if it was able to control those doors by its own, but... What are they doing now? Are they connecting eventually? Or not? Now nah, it looks like nothing's happening down there, so... <clears throat> GSX, reset position, thank you. And let's go ahead and close our doors. So... APU is running, then we can get rid of the ground power unit. And the parking brake is set, so we can get rid of the trucks as well. Okay, let's see once more if we can get pushback up here. Handling by. Yeah, arrow gate looks good to me. You don't want to request the ice? No. Is GSX ever going to correct that logic? I doubt it. I really doubt it. Okay, so... 140 is V2, then we're gonna set 150 on the speed. Again, nice feature that you can actually control that right on here, on the PFD. I do like that, they did a good job with that. Similarly for the heading back here, let's set, he let's set the Roma heading to 60. That is quite nice, that is actually a good idea of them. Okay, so, from the pre-flight then, I do think it's fair to say that the airplane has come quite a long way. So, in terms of the pre-flight setup, except for the um, LNAV and VNAV stuff in the MCDU, that's something they really need to work on. But apart from that, I would say they actually did a good job working on a lot of other features of the airplane. So. That's my first impression, like, a lot more stuff works now, you can do a lot more things. There's still a way to go, don't get me wrong, but they have been working on the plane. Okay then, nose left, looks good. Okay, beacon light on, and with that... Okay, door closed, beacon on, and the external doors are closed as well. Okay. Okay, we are definitely not going to stand by for the engine start, GSX. Definitely not going to do that. There is absolutely no reason to do so. Okay, so, starting engine one. So you can hear the air conditioning sound going off. Engine is starting to run up. I wonder if the oil pressure flag going out exactly at 1 is correct though, or if that should have taken a bit longer. Okay, good start on one, break is set, starting two. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. So let's monitor for the correctness. M2 is rising. Oil pressure has the red flag at zero, but at one it goes away. Okay, let's see. Once fuel flow comes on, we should see the ignition rise, and one is rising. 
Yep, those seem to match rather well. Hydraulic pump, too low pressure, three not on, that's normal. Cancel that master caution. Okay, two good starts, clear disconnect, clear sign left and no, clear sign right and have a good have a good day. So, why is the GPU still available? Didn't we disconnect that? <laughs> Interesting. Okay, gun it is. What about those other things? Okay, no chops, no cover. That's most important. Alright then, clear signal is received over there. So, 3A pump on, APU off, flaps 2, and then we can do the flight control track. Full up? Full... Okay, that is full forward. Look at that, the elevator is not coming full down there. Well, neutral. Full left, full right, neutral, and the rudder. Full left, full right, neutral. Okay then, trim. One up shall do. And that's about it. Okay then, let's go for taxi. Taxi lights on. Don't think we'll need the logo light anymore. Definitely bright enough. Okay, break off. Can we adjust the seat forward a bit? Nah, probably not, though. Okay, taxi. A little bit of power there, 30% and one plane starts to move. From the outside, it's certainly looking very nice now. From the inside, well, it's looking very nice as well. And we'll get the feedback for the rest as we fly along. Quick thing here, while it's still a little darker, like that's the uh, panel floodlights that we got on the plane at the moment. They are rather limited in area. And for the 170 and 175, there's actually a mod out there on flightsim.to which extends their reach and matches what you see on photos. So perhaps that's something for the developers to integrate in the uh, future for a future update. We can surely hope. Okay, so getting out over here now, we'll just continue on the orange line all the way until, um, what's that, Echo 2, I believe. The plane is slowly picking up speed nicely. My thrust is unchanged ever since we started the taxi. Let's get down that FO hut. Nice little glow effect that we've got over there. Okay, thrust going to idle. So idle is about 25%. I used 30 to get it taxiing. That seems about right to me. I still remember what Ethai said on our live stream that the plane should taxi in idle, but remember that was referring to the 175 back then, and we're sitting in a 190 now, which is consider considerably heavier. So, small difference might be possible. I need to hit Ethai up again for a future bit, that's for sure. Okay. 
let's get that hop down over here as well. Here it is. The automatic brightness is not implemented yet, it's only manual, but keeping it down to the minimum like we have it right now actually seems pretty good to me. Okay, so we'll just take Bravo 12, that's straight ahead, and then we don't need to um, go to the full length. Certainly the Embraer doesn't need that much runway, it's certified into London City after all. And you can believe me, we are eventually going to take it there in the sooner future. But for now, look at that, idle thrust, it's maintaining the speed nicely here at 11 knots right now. It used to be 10, so it is very slightly accelerating here. Get back down to 10. Here we go. And then we can take our turn onto the intersection. Looking good. Right, let's speed up a little bit. Cabin crew, prepare for departure. So that stuff coming on, transponder coming on, oh, and we should close the cover of the um, engine start and stop button. And auto thrust is armed. Okay, good to go. Weather radar, can't turn that on yet. Probably only in flight, I could imagine. So, first speed restriction is 210. We gotta keep that in mind since we don't have VNAV in the plane. Well, at least in our simulated one, we don't have it. Okay, then, ready? Timing. Stabilized. Set takeoff thrust. Thrust set. Checked. No takeoff speeds on the hot, just to mention it. Positive climb, gear up. Alnaf is engaged. Okay then, let's give the autopilot a chance to prove itself. AP. Okay, 2500 feet, accelerating to 10. Which is going to be our first climb restriction. Okay, flaps one. And flaps up. Note the green dot does not appear on the hut either. You can see the indications on the hut are still a little bit limited, but apart from that... Oh, that's an interesting movement there. Okay then, let's climb to a higher level, 190 at next. And passing Delta Mark 050, that's where we are out of the uh, speed limit, so we can accelerate towards 250. Anti-ice is completely automatic in the plane, so when we enter the clouds and when the plane detects icing, it should turn it on by itself. Transition altitude. Set standard. Would be nice to have an option in the future to synchronize the um, 
captains and the first officers are to meet us, but please don't sink it with a standby. Okay, it's done a cross check passing flight level 50. Now, checked. Okay. So, speed limit 250 until Ottersberg, that's what we have on the chart over here. And thereafter, it's going to be free speed towards Turbo. So, that's what I meant. Icing conditions and the anti ice wing valve is open. I wonder, it's only wings. Do we need to do engines manually? Now, that windshield. Are we turning it on or off like that now? Now that's anti ice switch off. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Suppose we can always force it on ourselves up there. Yeah, now the engine valves are open as well. Interesting that only the wing valve opened earlier. I would surely imagine that the engines should open as well. But okay, so be it for now. Right, let's put that back in auto, and then we'll just have the plane handle that stuff itself. Something else that I noticed on the hut over here is that only the last number seems to move dynamically. Ouch, that's getting bright. Let's turn the brightness up a bit. Only the last number seems to move dynamically, so if you look at that now, it looks like you're flying literally uh, 240 knots. While looking at the PFD is going to show you 250, so that's like 0 point a bit knots missing there. But the 24 over here, that 4 seems to be static. Until you actually pass the 0 to the last decimal. Okay, getting out of the uh, darkness, let's turn the brightness of our displays up a little bit. That's looking good. Alright. Reaching 10,000, let's increase to our climb speed. Gonna make that 300. In case you're wondering about the rate at which we are climbing right now, remember we've got climb 2 thrust selected. We can always go up to climb 1, and that would provide us with a little bit better rate of climb, but... You know, coming from the A330, I'm so used to climbing at uh, these kind of rates, so it doesn't matter really. We can take 35 minutes up to cruising level in the A330, and it just doesn't matter. Okay, passing 10,000, lights are coming off, no longer in sterile cockpit, but I'm gonna wait a little bit with the seatbelts until we are a bit higher above those clouds. Okay, that's about as bright as we'll get with the hut, so gotta live with that. Okay, let's see what kind of rate of climb we're getting. Stable at 300 knots, 1700 feet a minute. So if we want to, then we can always just go to the thrust rating computer and let's go climb one. That's a little bit more thrust. Let's see what rate of climb we're getting now. 2200. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Let's keep that. Okay, and with that, we are up and in the air. So let's see if the plane is capable of doing any fancy stuff like directs now. So let's not mess with it, we'll just go direct Romeo Tango Tango. Direct Romeo Tango Tango. Okay, so now the question is, did it draw the line from our present position, or did it just draw the line from Turbu? Suppose we gotta wait until we're a little bit further from Turbu, until we can verify whether that is working or not. Ok, 
Okay, synchronize the heading back, and then we can go flight level 290, and that's gonna be our final cruising level today. So, 2500 feet a minute rate of climb now. I tend to say that is quite good. And that's what we're going to use for the remainder of the uh, flight. Okay, let's say we want to go direct to Narev. Or Naksa? Naksa. A little bit hard to read there. Here we go. Okay, still the old phenomenon it seems. It's taken the direct from the last waypoint it's overflown and not from the present position. Well, okay, so be it. It is what it is. So, still not really capable of flying directs. Obviously, if you wanted to fly it on VATSIM, directs are paramount to be able to execute them. So, uh... Yeah, well, I do suppose you could uh, use heading mode for that, but, well, hopefully they can somewhat prioritize those directs for a future update. That would be really appreciated. Okay, should be clear of any turbulence now, so let's release the passengers as well. And a quick look outside. That's looking pretty cool indeed. I like what I'm seeing. I like what I'm seeing. The model looks really good. Alright, let's go back inside. Just intercepting that line from that direct over here. Okay, good rate of climb still, 2300, 2200. That's certainly alright. So that looks good overall. Okay, let's take a quick moment to go back into the cabin, just to see... Oops, uh, here we go. Note the sound effects, huh? Come on, I wanna move. Thank you. That's looking good. That's looking quite good indeed. Do I see a little bit of wing flex there when I'm looking very carefully? Yeah, I do think that is a bit of wing flex. Nice! 
though that's a very subtle effect there but you know there's always that little bit of turbulence so that's actually quite cool to see that's actually really cool to see good job with that okay let's move back to the cockpit though by the way worth noting the no smoking sounds on the seatbelts are off exactly as we've sat it in the cockpit Okay then, here we go again. About to reach our top of climb. Approaching. So, let's get our Venice charts out. Vertical speed. What's it doing now? Interesting. Needed to press that twice. It wanted to go. It just wanted to maintain the present altitude when I pressed it the first time. That's a bug. That's a bug for sure. Okay, another thing that, that just comes across my mind, looking at the progress window down here. So, we've got the navigation display set to 100 nautical mile range right now. But it tells me it's 96.9 miles to our destination. Our destination is here. I do have a feeling this is the current distance through the air and not the um, distance along the flight plan as it should be. That should always be a distance along the flight plan down there. Which obviously is pretty helpful for planning your descent, if you know what I mean. But okay, we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way anyway, so we might as well just do it that way. Just for the sake of it, let's just switch between speed and mark, see what we're, what we're gonna get. As you can see, it just opens in um, some high mark number, with we're really not sure why it's doing that. So we'll take it down to 7, 8. And that should be good then. Okay. So overall, until this point, well, we are well used to not having a VNAV in this airplane at the moment. So for that reason, I'm not going to take the lack of VNAV into account with my... Um, with my feedback here, but the Direct 2 functionality also still needs updating, so we still got a very basic fly plan system in the app. Why is my speed going down? Come on, airplane. 7 8, please. Just maintain that. So, yeah, um, we still have that default fly planning system, not sure how to call it exactly, which is still, well, a default flight. What's it doing with my speed? No. You got a Mach number and you maintain 7, 8, my friend. So let's try a third time. Oh boy. Okay, that thing wants to fly whatever it wants to fly. That's annoying, but... Then I'll just turn the indicator up. But that's annoying. It's not supposed to change speed targets on its own all, all the time. Okay, so we try that once more. Um, it seems the um, default route system and the default flight plan that we've got down there are obviously um, the main points right now. So that needs to be replaced with a custom system. And when it is, then with a bit of luck, we are going to get a plane that is laterally well controllable. But that's my main point right now. The lack of uh, proper LNAV and the lack of proper VNAV functions. So that's 
the main thing they need to integrate here. Apart from that, there have been small things like when we went to, went to vertical speed, it tried to level off, it kept changing the speed target in our cruise over there. But what we can certainly say is there's been quite a bit of progress. The hut, well, it's the first version of the hut we got with the plane, so I, I think the 170 and 175 haven't even gotten that. Why is the speed target 0.81 now? Come on, airplane. Are you kidding me? Well, um, so for a first version of the HUD, it seems to be doing what it's supposed to do. The fly path vector is pointing where it should point. The horizon line is on top of the horizon, which is totally normal. Remember, that's your altitude that you are flying down there. So the HUD indications seem all right to me. And, uh, well, it did have those problems with all that speed information missing over here. Fairly should it should have that. But if any of you um, know the Embraer better, then please feel free to uh, comment on that. Apart from that, the airplane has definitely come great ways since we uh, flew it the very first time. So we can see a steady progress. Now, the biggest thing is obviously still work in progress. And we haven't even seen anything of that yet. That is the FMS. So. If we just go over here, let's see the progress page, for example, distance to go 72 miles. Well, I can tell you that 72 miles great circle, but not along the route. Along the route, it's over 100. So, yeah. Um, the FMS still needs work, and I tend to say the FMS still needs a lot of work. Like, if we just go over a couple pages down there... Um, performance, cruise. I mean, look at that. There's still no information here. N nothing VNAV related at all, so they still have the most part of their work in front of them, that's for sure. Creating an FMS from scratch and then bug fixing it later on is a great deal of work, so they certainly still got a long way ahead. But we can certainly see the airplane is showing progress. So my main hope right now is that they're going to continue their progress for the next probably one or two years or so. And then we might eventually get a very good Embraer. And yes, I just said it can become very good. It, it is showing the potential. Like if there's one thing that uh, Flight Sim Studios are proving over the time here, then it is that they do mean it with the airplane. The the start of the project was, well, you name it, but the development of the project is something that I really do like. Okay, so let's uh, start with a little bit of mental VNAV calculations here, because obviously the plane can't do any of that itself yet. Okay, do we have any altitude restrictions on that arrival? We don't, huh? Okay, so then we can just start doing that stuff ourselves. Hello? Oh, look at that. It hung itself up. Did it just say it was coming a good way? Alright. So, we're gonna be at 3,011 miles out. That means we need to lose 26,000 feet, so that is... 78 miles. In other words, we can probably start our descent rather soon. Okay, um, so, from Laren it's like, yeah, four miles to lose the speed, plus another four over here, so let's say if we plan Laren in uh, 5,000, we should be good to go. So we've got 24,000 to lose to Laren. Over here, it's like, What's that? 21 miles, then this is another... Yeah, let's say that's 25 miles. Make it 27 for either mathematics. But so that's 9,000 feet. So 5 plus 9 is 14. So Albert at 14,000. So we're going to lose 15,000 till Albert. And 15,000 is uh, 45 miles. So that could be roughly 45 miles to Albert over there along the route. So... I tend to say we just go for it, we just start our descent, 
that's probably the best we go we're gonna get for the Venus cult. Okay then, FPA. Minus three. We're gonna go and fix the speed over here. You can give me 300 knots straight. Thank you. Well, I wanna try something. Before we do an FPA descent all the time, let's, get, let's just go, whoopsie. Let's just go level change. And I want to see how much of a descent rate we're going to get out of the airplane. At these levels, the speed, I would expect something about 3000 or so once it's stabilized on speed. So let's see how that's going to turn out. In the meantime, auto brake low and we start on our descent. Let's put the belts on. We are doing 3,600 right now. I mean, I cannot comment on how realistic that is, but it can comment on that... Um, that it is not overly excessive. That much I can say for sure. It's not overly excessive. If it's realistic though, an Embraer pilot will probably have to confirm that. Okay, now it's 3,000 feet a minute. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll just let it go in level change and we'll see how that's going to work out. Okay then, let's just continue our approach setup. Minimums is 210. So give me minimums in barrel, please. 210, looks good. Then 109.95. 109.95, active 1. 109.95, active 2. Alright, I don't think it's possible to pre-select the course in here, so we'll just leave that at where it is right now. Okay, rate of descent is gradually reducing as we're getting lower, that's what I would expect. But before we're getting too low, let's just go back to um, FPA mode. Three degrees downstairs. That's okay. Probably even a little bit less right now. Let's do vertical speed minus 1500 or so. Here we go, that should be sufficient. We just descended a little bit steeper in uh, level change, so obviously you got to correct for that now. Okay, so that is that. Can we do anything else for our approach setup? Most approach is going to be all on off. Do we have that in the box? I don't think so. Don't think the default flight plan system supports missed approaches. No, it doesn't. Okay, so be it. Right then, let's go performance, landing, and let's do a little bit of initialization over here. Let's see, that's just departure, and the manifest I don't think has any landing data, no. Okay, so we don't have any landing data available in here, that is unfortunate. Well, so be it. Then we, well, let's see if we can get anything out of the um, default weather system here. Give me that METAR. Okay, Venice Marco Polo, no METAR available. Does it have METARs for anything here? Oh boy, lovely. Welcome to Microsoft Chart Simulator. Okay, well, in that case, I'm just going to use the real-world tool off-screen here, and I'll tell you as soon as I got the data. Okay, so the wind is 3303, slightly variable between 290 and 050. 
Capital K, 3 degrees, 1026. So it's going to be 3 degrees centigrade. The wind, 330 at 3. Okay, we'll leave all that stuff. Not sure why the Roma heading is missing. Well, probably because the database doesn't have it. No icing and approach type or speeds. Yeah, non precision or a cut one approach. That's what we want. Okay, landing. And that's our approach speed right over there for a landing flap 5. And those should automatically appear on the speed display once our speed is getting down. So that does look okay to me. So, 25 miles till we're turning inbound. We're at 16,000 now. We said we wanted to lose 10,000. So let's go into level change again and continue our descent like that. Let's see what kind of rate we're getting now from the plane. It would obviously be very helpful if we had a range to altitude arc available here. Okay, 2600 feet a minute. Not sure how realistic that is. Might be a little bit on the fast side. Or on the uh, high rate of descent side, but we'll see. So we said we wanted Laren at um, 5,000 feet. <coughs> Let's see, we're doing a ground speed of uh, 370, so we are definitely descending at a rather steep angle right now. Our flight path vector so shows us the same, it's a 5 degree angle at which we are descending here. Probably a bit quick for my taste. But then again... It's also telling you we got three minutes until we're going to start our inbound turn. So three minutes at this rate, plus whatever we need to lose our um, airspeed. Going back to what's 250 knots in a few moments. Yeah, let's just keep it like that. After all, there's one important thing for us to remember. Flying the airplane like we're doing right now, where we don't have any VNAV available. We are just guesstimating our um, vertical position here. We can do rough calculations in our head, but we will never be able to fly it as accurate as VNAV would be. So, for that reason, if we end up a little bit low and have to fly level for a little bit, well, if that means we get a nicer view in Venice, then hey. Okay, descending a little bit further, level 70, something the likes. And then we're approaching 11,000, so let's start dial back our speed so that by the time we reach 250, we're. Oh, by the time we reach 100, we're at 250 knots. So, fast melts are on, landing lights coming on, and the sterile cockpit switch is coming on as well, so that the flight attendants know that they can only disturb us in case uh, of real trouble now. So, speed is reducing. Now, it appears to me that we're still descending at 700 feet a minute. The speed is coming back rather quickly. That I tend to say the airplane has a little bit too much drag at the moment. That's just my feeling, but I would say that's a little bit too much drag, probably. Now, some will say, well, but you haven't flown any Embraer, so how do you know? Well, there's a little bit of basic theory that applies to any of those aircraft. Um, let's do vertical speed right now. 1000 feet a minute should be good. So there's a little theory that applies to all of those aircraft. And that is that when you have an airplane that's fuel efficient, then it has to be aerodynamically efficient. Like for example, the A330, which is a rather efficient aircraft, at least for the standards at which it was built, an idle thrust is only going to give you a thousand feet a minute at 250 knots and level 100. By the way, why are we not descending? Vertical speed, thousand, downwards? Why is it maintaining altitude? Let me guess. Yeah, look at that, as soon as we touched it again. So there's definitely a bug still in the vertical speed logic here. Okay, well, so be it. We can live with that. So 
so yeah, to get back to the topic, um, if an airplane is able to descend at, I don't know, two and a half thousand feet a minute at 250 knots and level 100 in idle, then the airplane has a huge amount of drag. And a huge amount of drag also means a huge amount of fuel usage to overcome the drag. And that's why we can say that if we had an airplane, for example, just an example, okay? Not saying it's the case over here, just an example. Let's say we have an airplane that's doing 250 knots, flat level 100, idle thrust descent, and it gives you 2,500 feet a minute. Then we know that airplane would be super inefficient in cruise flight. And since we know that the Embraer is a rather efficient airplane, we can say that that is not the case with this airplane. So it has to descend at a lesser rate. Now to figure out what it actually does, let's just go level change once more. Okay, speed flight level change. Let's see what's we, what we're getting. Thousand seven hundred ish. All right, that is totally fine. So at two fifty level one hundred, the drag seems totally fine to me. By the way, where is Elna flying us? This looks like we're getting quite off track. Well, no comment on that. Okay then, let's go down 3000, set QNH 1026. Right, I can't be bothered to uh, manually dial it in every one, so I'll just press the B button. And down we go. Okay, so 250 knots idle descent, 1500 feet a minute now. And now let's see what the speed brake can do. Speed brake full. I could well imagine anything to the rate of descent approximately doubling. And look at that. That's what it's doing. So, seems to me like the drag of the speed brake is okay now. So the flight model at these lower speeds definitely seems fine to me. Alright, Ben is coming into view in the back over there. That's quite an effective speed brake, I like that. I like that. That's a thousand to go. I'll start reducing our airspeed. Okay, let's go ahead and select Warlock and match that track for me, please. Okay, what's the course supposed to be? 039. And that's localizer capture. Approach mode armed. Okay, the glide stop tells me I'm exactly on it. So why doesn't it capture? And why does it tell me that we're on it? I'm over the fix now where we should have been. Okay, something is wrong with the glide slope scale. Look at that. We overfly we overflew the Fox Fox. We should have been in 3000 there, but it tells me I'm on the glide. I'm definitely not. Okay, flux 1. There is something wrong with that glide slope. Checked. Why does it go into alt cell? Come on, man, keep descending. Why doesn't it capture the glide? I mean, it tells me we are exactly on it. Now we got glide slope capture. Okay, get down that speed, flaps 2, gear down, speed brake going back up then. Might be a little bit on the fast side right now, but we should be very well able to get that back under control until we reach the uh, stable gate. 
with a speed brake maybe. Okay, flaps three. Okay, speed brake doesn't work. At this point, the airplane seems to have some protection in there. Alright then, flaps five limit speed is gonna be 180. Okay, flaps five. Alright, Venice, my friend. Okay, go around altitude 3000 sets, and we are reaching the 500 foot stable gate. Speed is okay, thrust is okay, so we're stabilized, continue. Obviously that was just about the limit of what you can do, but... <clears throat> but there's something wrong with the glide slope indication, it tells me we're at half a dot right now, and the puppy tells me four rat. Continue. We're visual after all. Okay, reverse green, spoilers. 70 knots. Manual brakes. Was it just my imagination or did we just hear some passengers clapping when I took the turn a little bit uh, sporty? Okay, so clear left, clear right, crossing runway 4 left. Then we can get rid of that head-up display. Here we go. Okay, landing lights off, strobe light off, APU. Flaps going up and the transponder standby. Okay, so we made it all the way over to Venice. Lovely scenery, by the way, by a beautiful model of the world. Can really recommend it, especially for features like this. You know, um, no, it's a good scenery. It's a good scenery. I did like flying to Venice um, in, in the real world. And I don't just mean the uh, Venezia Michele Oliri Treviso airport, but I actually mean the uh, Venice Marco Polo airport, that one, where we are right now. So a nice little 38 minute flight. I do tend to say that that was quite a ride. Let's just taxi over to the left over here and then we'll just go parallel to the terminal because I do have a feeling that's gonna make for a lovely picture and yeah that's what happens when you got uh, pilots on social media huh oh uh, Kennedy ground um, United 123 mind if we do a little trip around the airport just take a couple of nice pictures oh boy I want to hear that in real world I want to hear that happening in the real world But this is looking quite cool indeed. I like it. I really like this. 
So let's talk about a little bit of those um, basics of our flight then. How did we like it? How did everything turn out? Well, to be honest, we are by now well aware of the limitations of the um, LNAV system and the missing VNAV system. So those things you absolutely still have to do yourself. However, the stuff that's happening around these systems is uh, coming together quite well, I tend to say. Um, we can see very good progress over the time. Obviously, it does take time, so don't expect a full fidelity Embraer over the next half a year or something. And to implement the entire FMS to bug fix it later on, that's just what happens when you implement something new. So don't expect to get an FMS uh, or a perfect FMS straight away. That's that doesn't happen. But what we can say is that we are probably in to get a nice little airplane over the next, I don't know, year or two or something the likes. And ultimately that's what counts, isn't it? Like, they, they are doing progress and depending on your desires, I tend to say that at this point I can for the first time probably start to recommend this airplane. Now let me be very clear over here as to what I would recommend about it and what part I would probably say like, nah, if you're looking for that, better stay away from it. So, for now. So, if you are looking for an airplane that you do not want to fly online, if you're looking for an airplane that you um, just want to use for casual A to B flights, then this is slowly becoming yours. Um, let's just park it here, then we'll continue. Right. So, brake set, APU is running. Shutting down. So, don't be mistaken over here. Um, I sometimes make these flights look easy by, you know, working within the limitations of the systems. Now, with that I mostly mean that I, you know, um, do things like the vertical calculations in my head anyway all the time when, I, when I'm flying in the real world. So, I sometimes make these things look easy. You will have to do those um, Calculations. If you want to fly the plane, you'll have to navigate it vertically like a 727 or like a Boeing 707. On top of that, a lot of the features that would be helpful for that, like the uh, distance to destination down here, don't work correctly at the moment. So you'll have to do some uh, vertical guesstimate. You will have to figure the speeds out yourself. You'll fi have to figure the deceleration points out yourself and stuff like that. If you're willing to do that, then you're probably in for a treat with that Embraer, because it does start to uh, come together nicely. However, it is definitely also going to take a little while until we are eventually going to get it to a point where I would say that, yeah, that thing is now a, a great airplane. But if Flight Sim Studios keep doing what they're doing, and if they... What's that? Okay, no comment. So if Flight Sim Studios keep doing what they're doing, and if they keep doing that for a while, like I'm talking at least a year or something over here, then yeah, we might actually be in for a good airplane at some point. And I do think that's the fair assessment over here. Um, right now the Embraer 190 and 195 come at a cost of uh, €39.95. Now, at that point, if you don't mind um, the very limited lateral navigation, if you don't mind the completely missing vertical navigation, then I would tend to say that, yeah, maybe that's an airplane for you. Maybe that's something for you to go for. And I think that it is very good to see that we have reached that point where I can, even with some limitations, but where I can slowly start recommending Flight Sim Studio Embraers. So, good to see that we've got that progress and we can only hope that they are going to commit to 
keep working on the project in that pace, but if they do, then I'm pretty sure that in a year, maybe in two, depending on uh, how their FMS progress is internally, since we know nothing about that, we are slowly going to get a good airplane from this. And that's my main feedback from today's flight. With that, I would like to say thank you very much for watching, hope that you've enjoyed it, and if you did, then do let me know in the comments below. I'm also looking forward to read what you guys think on this one, and what your take is on it. And with that, that's me chiming off. Be sure to leave a like on YouTube, as it does help with the algorithms, and finally, if you're up for more, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and if you really like what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and see you all again on the next one.